Well, Isimon. Isimon is, uh, uh, we're a little bit proud of this service. I think uh, we have a good uh, feature set right now, and uh, we expect to expand it in the future with more uh, features. But right now, I think it's fairly complete, and it's pretty much a service for you as a reseller uh, to facilitate the management and the configuration and the monitoring of these units that you have on the field. It doesn't matter if there are QX appliances, if there are, uh, if it is our hosted um, ECQX, or if it is your uh, your own hosted uh, QX ECQX ISO image. All of those three can be uh, monitored and available on the ECMON platform. So we're going to run that in our servers. You're going to pay a subscription for it. Uh, currently, you can buy that in our store um, for uh, twenty dollars uh, a system per year monitoring. Or if you have ten devices, it costs about fifteen dollars uh, per device uh, for ten devices or more per year. Okay, so you pay uh, that up front, and then you get uh, the monitoring capability for one entire year. But it is a uh, service again for monitoring and uh, management configuration management uh, and essentially what it does is that it lets you give better service to your customers I mean it's all about uh, uh, being able to with the alerts that you get on the events uh, you're going to be able to respond more quickly to your customer needs I mean it's all about being more responsive we always say that it's, it's one of these uh, uh, Opportunities to being proactive instead of reactive, you know, and and a, and, a, and a good example of that would be if you have a bad quality call uh, events to alert you via an email, um, you're going to get notified if a customer is having a bad quality call. Now, what you do with it is up to you, but it goes a long way if you're able to see a recurring problem with that, and you can call your customer and tell them that you notice that the calls are bad quality. And uh, let's just see what's going on. What is the issue? If it is a network issue, if it is a phone issue or trunk or whatever. And it goes a long way because instead of you waiting for your customer to be very upset about this problem because it has been happening uh, for quite some time, by the time he calls you, it may be too late. So uh, it gives you the ability to figure out, uh, be alerted about the things happening and be more uh, responsive. So another thing you can do is that you, you can do certain configuration control, and I will explain a little bit more later, but essentially let you manage your configurations and store them, restore them, and upload them uh, on the system um, um, uh, through the ECMON portal. At the end of the day, it's about providing better customer service. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. So with ECMON, you can uh, you can see on a directory assigned to you, and again, you can have a combination of all three types of devices, but you're going to be able to see there in the table, first of all, is your devices are active, communicating with ECMON or not, and they will come up in red when they're not available. So you're going to see that, and you'll be able, you're going to get a notification of that also. Uh, you can see some basic uh, settings such as uh, what firmware version you have, what is the unique ID, what is the host name you assign to it, uh, how uh, much time that device has been uh, up, okay, and or in the case that is disconnected, how much time has been disconnected, and it also shows you the amount of register endpoints, register phones uh, that you have on the system. So uh, there's other some options. Uh, there to see on a graph, on a historical um, uh, way, uh, on, a, on a range, like a time range, you can see CPU uh, utilization, so it can tell you if the CPU is gonna, getting a little bit overloaded or not, and also the number of simultaneous calls at any given time. It uh, usually helps you see how your customer uh, is doing uh, calls or how many calls are doing in the system. Uh, very valuable information for a reseller. You can get uh, over 70 events. Now, we do have 
all these events on the QX system and typically they either send you an SMS or you can send an email program directly on the QX system. But what we did is that we extended that so that you can do the same on ECMON, receive these events on ECMON and then on ECMON configure which ones you want them to alert you via an email so that you can take action. Okay. Uh, the other one you can do, which is one of the latest features, is that you can remotely log in to the QX devices. Now, this is particularly important for appliances, QX appliances, because many of those you may have behind a company router. And uh, if you don't open ports in the router to access your uh, QX device remotely, uh, you will not be able to do so. But with ECMON, you can configure it so that it could open uh, a temporary VPN and allow you to access the device remotely from the ECMON tool and uh, change configurations uh, or changes on the on the GUI of the system and then uh, close it up. And we can also uh, have an option there to allow you to access the phones that are behind the QX device uh, directly too. It's a little more involved. It requires uh, a chaining uh, option on your browser, but in any case, it gives you the ability to be able to reach the device and the phones remotely and you don't have to drive to your customer for, for making simple configurations um, uh, that you may, you may do through this tool. Okay, as far as uh, someone is complaining that there's no audio, uh, let me see, can I get a response from you guys if you're hearing me? Yeah, we're hearing you. You are? Okay, thank you. I think uh, one of the guys having a, a problem. Okay. Um, as far as uh, other uh, features that you can do with ECMON, uh, let me see. What license? You also get a notification what licenses you have active on, on the device. Uh, you can uh, back up and restore your configuration. Actually, let me go back one slide here. Yeah. Now that one is uh, really interesting. So you can you can save a config from a QX device into ECMON, or you can restore it from ECMON, and you can have several of them there, or you can upload or download from ECMON to your PC. So let's say that you uh, have a template config that you uh, massage on your lab and you want to use that as your baseline to uh, load up on, uh, on, on, on some units, you can upload that into your ECMON and then assign it uh, to certain ECMON devices and then upload it into the, into, uh, no, not ECMON devices, I'm, ta I'm talking about ECQX devices, and then upload it on the ECQX, whether it's a cloud or an appliance, okay? So uh, it, it doesn't allow you to create that configuration on the tool, for example, create extensions and all of that. I mean, uh, it doesn't allow you to do that, but it allows you to manipulate the configurations. And and a lot of the people, what they do is that on their lab, they have a unit, they log into it, they create uh, a, a vanilla flavor type config that they use, and then that's a file that you're gonna upload into the ECMON tool, okay? Uh, as far as uh, you can also s do software updates on the units and you can schedule reboots on the units. Uh, some people want to reboot it like Sunday in you know, middle of the night. You know, uh, they like to do that. I don't see a reason for it. But if you want to do it, you can schedule reboots through the ECMON tool. Um, okay. Now, here's some uh, of the events that we uh, report. Obviously, there are many more, but for example, you can have a notification the system had rebooted. Uh, you can have a notification that you had a credit amount on a certain route and it expires, so they close that route. Uh, you can have the cold, cold quality warning that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, you can uh, have an, an event that tells you that if you have a redundant system, uh, the redundant system is down, so you, you want to check out what's happening in there. Uh, if the we try to send a call recording to an external FTP server and there was a failure in that, we can get an alarm. Uh, an IP phone registration, that's probably a common one. You know, you lose an IP phone registering into the system. Uh, 
if someone logged in into the unit and if there has been a software update. And these are, again, just some examples. OK. Uh, as far as the gateways, uh, all we want to mention on this slide is that we do have failover capability. Uh, and by that, what I mean, I mean, if you look at this picture, you see that we have uh, an EC1 and an ECQX on the cloud. We have office extensions registered to the ECQX and maybe even remote extensions really doesn't matter where your where your phones are located uh, and then you have an ITSP termination to the PSTN but you could actually have uh, if this customer is an important customer our FXO or E1 gateway on-prem and you can have the failover option activated on the gateway which means that these extensions can register especially the ones on the office here 201, 202, 203 they can do the gateway and uh, they also register as extensions to the hosted platform in case you got a broadband uh, loss the phones on the registration to the gateway they can do outbound call through the gateway through your fxo or e1 port and the same on the uh, vice versa on the receiving side you can have calls coming in from the pstn to the gateway and reach your extensions and the reason you can do that is because our gateways include an auto attendant on the unit it is it, by default includes an auto attendant so you can have an incoming fxo call go to the auto attendant of the gateway and from there you can dial your extensions and reach any anyone inside the company so now you have inbound and outbound call capability during a, a hosted fail uh, situation or broadband fail situation plus you can do extension to extension calling now a lot of the ITSPs they do have a default uh, uh, cell number or PSTN number you can use in case you're not reachable uh, on your platform and you can put that number to be this FXO line for example okay so again it's not for everyone some people don't want to buy the unit or pay for the PSTN line but if you have an important customer uh, that will be a good option for them. As far as pricing, uh, again, ECQX uh, in the US hosted by us on the portal, there's a store. It is $5 per extension per month. Uh, we also have call recording as an option, audio conference, and, and um, a call center as an option. And, and, and again, you, the reseller gets the account and you, uh, uh, price that up to your customer as you see fit. We don't dictate the end customer price. Uh, you, whatever you can get away with is, uh, is what uh, is up to you. Uh, it, is, it is order it pay through PayPal, so it's all automatic monthly, and you mark it up as desired. Now, outside of the US, like I was saying earlier, we'll, you tell me what you want, and we'll give you a very, very competitive price on a per extension basis with the features that you want. And of course, the ECMON is included on all this. Competitive advantages, well, everything is designed in-house. Uh, as many of you know, we, we don't use asterisk or open source. We always done all our software, our hardware, everything uh, from scratch. So we have a better control of the feature set that we want to add to the product line. Uh, extensive experience over 19 years on the Quadro, on the QX, uh, line of products, uh, very good technical support and training uh, modules, uh, integration with pretty much any SIP phone out there. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're adding an Alcatel business line uh, to the uh, uh, proof phones uh, coming up soon. Uh, many testing with many SIP trunk providers, and I will say that SIP trunking nowadays is so mature, uh, it's very hard to have a problem with a SIP trunk provider nowadays, but in any case, we'd like to test and announce uh, the, the ones that we have tested with. And those startup costs are long-term contracts. And then you can combine cloud service with on-prem. I mean, most of the other cloud vendors do not have appliances, we do. So if, you're, if you have customers that are comfortable using cloud on the smaller side, but then on a big location, they wanna use an on-prem system, either because they want to invest on it and save uh, long term, they don't want to do the recurring model, then you can do both with Epigee because we have both options for you, okay? 
And as far as uh, how to reach your sales at APGCOM, if you want a demo, we can activate an ECQX for you and let you play with that on our ECMON platform. And what I would like to do is just briefly show you uh, a screen on the ECMON. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see. Actually, what I'm showing first is our ECQX uh, EPG Cloud. And if, you, if I go here, I'm already logged in. If I look here and look at some of my devices, actually, I'm going to see a whole bunch of devices in here, but I can probably go to, uh, you will see a list of all your devices. And as far as, uh, 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 you know, what, how many uh, are active, are inactive, and the store. I want to show up here in the store. I don't have any anything on the store at this moment, but if I go to my Cloud QX, okay, I can order here, as you can see, ECQX instance, adding iPhone extensions, call recording, call center, and so forth. So I can go to ECQX, I go to my cart here, all right, and then I can select how many of these I want, and I can go to checkout. So it's no different than any other store, okay? Uh, and then here there's a pay. It's very hard to see on your screen, but there's a once I enter information about that instance, that I can go to place an order via PayPal. Okay, so uh, that is just a, a, a way to do it all online. The other uh, web page I wanted to show you is our ECMON. Uh, you can see it on the screen here. Uh, Tigran, uh, which is one of our tech guys, uh, test account here, just to give you an idea. And uh, essentially, Tigran has uh, several devices. There are different icons. Here he has four devices, five devices that are uh, physical uh, appliances, and he's got two devices that are uh, ISO uh, type images, okay, which are this other one. And you can see almost all of them are not available right now except one, who is a, a QX3000 unit. But you can see the unique ID, what type of price plan, what type of activation time uh, it has, a firmware version, and so forth. And you can actually click in here, and you can – hold on a second. I got to log in again because it logged me out. Uh, let me go back again to Tigran. Uh, hold on a second for users. Hold on a second. Okay, I go to Tigran again, and I can go to this uh, QX device, and here I can see uh, licenses activated, information about the device itself. I can see some system load. For example, if I look at this week, I can see load information on the CPU. He hasn't done any active calls on this device. Uh, pending events, there's none to display because he has actually cleared them all, but you would have several events shown in here. Uh, I can I can see what configuration he has backed up uh, one configuration on the seventh of this month and you can have several of them shown in here. Um, uh, he doesn't have any firmware update uh, schedule and then on configuration you can actually do this remote access configuration part. Uh, what this will do is that it will it will give you a period of time to be able to do a remote access on the on the device. Uh, I think if I wait a couple of minutes, this will change to um, essentially uh, given the remote access to it, okay? I, I requested it, but I'm waiting for the confirmation. Let me go check it again. Okay, it was trying to do a st establish a connection to it, but here we go. If I go back to it, I can see here a button, GUI access, and if I hit GUI access, now I'm getting to the configuration uh, login of this device uh, at the uh, customer on-prem and of course I can use my login credentials so very very powerful uh, capability okay all right let me go back to the last slide Give me a second here okay 
So pretty much we're done as far as uh, if you want a, a demo of this uh, ECQX or our ECMON, you let us know and we'll work out a, a one month demo for you at no cost at all. Uh, if you got, you need to talk to me, you, you got our phone number here or send us an email at salesfpg.com and uh, uh, we will have this presentation uh, posted uh, and also uh, anything that you need uh, moving forward, uh, let me know. We're going to have other sales presentations uh, for some other topics coming up uh, in addition to the technical ones that are already scheduled. So at this time, I'm going to turn on uh, any all the microphones. Let's see if there's anyone that would like to have any questions. I'm looking at the chat. Uh, the chats are pretty much about audio. You can hear me. Uh, is there an automatic backup available for ECQX with email notification or is backup, backup done by EPG? If we are hosting the servers, we will have them backed up. If our server crashes, we will get another one going right away. And then uh, what we don't guarantee for you is the broadband connection. But as far as the server is concerned, if we're hosting it, we will have a backup for that. Okay. Uh, does ECMON an external static IP? Uh, no, you don't need to have an external static IP in order to communicate with ECMON from a, either from an appliance or an instance. Uh, can you show calling features on ECQX? Um, I don't know what that means, but if it is if it is the uh, help uh, that we have for how to uh, do the calling features, we do have done on the login screen. Uh, but I'm not sure if that is a if I'm answering the correct question here. Uh, you may clarify uh, via text. Uh, if uh, QX appliance is put on the highest security, can ECMON still access it? Uh, it should, but that's a good question. Uh, uh, I will have to check that and get back to you too on this because I don't, I'm not sure um, uh, if you can do that, but it should. Uh, he meant call forwarding. I guess, Toon, I'm going to take, since I know you, I'm going to take these questions uh, uh, separately so we don't take people's time in here, okay? But in any case, uh, I want to thank all of you for participating today. Stay tuned for other uh, webinars that we're going to have moving forward. And uh, have a great afternoon. Goodbye.